Trigonometry, Math 126. Here we go. Uh, unit 1, Lesson 1, just deals with angles and their measure. Trigonometry is really the study of triangles. Um, so let's start with the, the idea of an angle. First of all, when angles are in standard position in the xy plane, so we're thinking of angles now in this xy plane down here, uh, the vertex of the angle is at the origin, which we put it right there. Um, and the initial side of the angle lies along the positive x-axis. So in standard position, the initial side of your angle lies along the positive x-axis, right along that green line I'm showing you. The terminal side of the angle would then indicate um, what the actual angle is. So like right here, that's a special angle. Example 1 says the terminal side of special angles are displayed below. Label the end of each terminal side with its degree measure. So that angle right here, so we're actually talking about this angle right here, is a 30 degree angle. That's one of our special angles. The next one, let me get rid of all this. The next angle, which would go from here for the initial side, terminal side right here, that's a 45 degree angle. Cuts the first quadrant in half there, so it's a 45 degree angle. This next angle with the terminal side right here, that angle is a 60 degree angle. That's another special angle. And then if you look at the angle that goes all the way from the x-axis over to the y-axis, that angle is a 90 degree angle. So those are all of your special angles in the first quadrant and at the edges of the quadrant with the exception of zero, which I didn't label. Zero would be just the angle that comes, has an initial side along the x-axis and a terminal side along the x-axis. That would be a zero degree angle. And so we're labeling these um, by their terminal side there, as you see, by their terminal side of the angle. And then as you move on over here, the next one would be 120 degrees. And so you have your initial side here, your terminal side along this line, that's 120 degrees. The next one, which has a terminal side right here, that would be 140 or 135 degrees, because it's a 45 degree angle added on to your 90. This one right here, which is 30 degrees away from 180, that'd be 150 degrees. And then your straight angle, which has an initial side here and a terminal side here, that's 180 degrees. Then as we move down into the third quadrant, we're talking about the angle that goes from the x-axis all the way around to this terminal side. That angle is 180 plus another 30 is 210 degrees. And then if I extend it a little bit further to this terminal side, that would be 225 degrees, because it's 45 degrees past the 180. And then as you keep winding around, the next one's going to be 240 degrees. And then this angle right here is 270 degrees. And then as we keep winding around, the angle that goes from here to here is another 30 degrees beyond that, so that's 300 degrees. The angle that goes from here to here is 315 degrees. 
and the angle that goes from here to here is 330 degrees and then the angle that goes all the way around is 360 degrees a full revolution is 360 degrees and then you can keep going so 30 degrees is the has the same terminal side as well 360 plus 30 which would be 390 degrees and then if I keep it going that would be another 45 degrees added on to 360 so 405 degrees and so on. I can keep going around that way, keep winding further and further. Another thing to point out is negative angles. What that means, if I move in the negative direction, so if I wind this way, those are negative angles. So this would be negative 30 degrees. It's coterminal with negative 30. And that's the next term coming up, as you see down below in the notes, coterminal. Um, this would be negative 45, this would be negative 60, this would be negative 90, and it's coterminal with 270. So let's just take those out. So that's the idea. So an example to it says, name the quadrants or axes in which each of the following angles would lie. So if you're talking about a 140 degree angle, where would that be? 140 degrees would have a terminal side somewhere between 135 and 150. So somewhere in here, with the initial side here, there's your 140 degree angle. Terminal side is in the second quadrant, this region over in here. So name the quadrants. This would be quadrant 2. I'll do this in red here. You can use Roman, numeral, no, sorry, Roman numerals for the quadrants. I'll just use the numbers 1, 2, 3, or 4. Remember the quadrants are 1 is where both x and y are positive, 2 is where x is negative but y is positive, 3 is where both x and y are negative, and then quadrant 4 is over where the x is positive and the y is negative. As you just wind around in a counterclockwise direction, you go from quadrant 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. So 280 degrees. That would be somewhere down in here, which puts it in quadrant 4. 336 degrees is somewhere in this region, so that's going to put it in quadrant 4 as well. Negative 100. That would go this direction, a little past negative 90, so that puts you down in quadrant 3. And as I go through this, it would be a good idea to pause frequently once you think you got the idea to go ahead and fill in the rest of the problems there on, on the particular example that we're working on uh, before I work it out, and you can check to see if you've got it right. So negative 212, well, here's negative 180. Go past that a little bit to negative, negative 210 would be right at here. So negative 212 is just a little bit past that, but it's in the second quadrant. 720 degrees. Well, that would mean you need to wind around one full revolution. This is 360. Another full revolution would double that. That's 720. That would actually lie on the positive x-axis. So I'll just say positive x here. It's the positive x-axis. 450 degrees. Well, here's 360. If I go another 90, that gets me to 450, so that's along the positive y-axis. And negative 520. Well, here's negative 180, negative 360. Here's negative 450. If I keep going, there's negative 540. So negative 520 would come up just a little bit short of that, but it's in the third quadrant. Now, as we look down, it says two angles in standard position with the same terminal sides are called coterminal angles. 
which I've talked about up above, like 0 and 360 are coterminal, 30 and 390, 45 and 405, 330 and negative 30, so on and so forth. So example 3 says, find three different coterminal angles for each of the following angles and then generalize the result. So let me identify coterminal angles in, let's do this in green here. So 0 degrees, we already see that 360 is coterminal with that. What else would be coterminal with that? So 0, if I wrap all the way around, 360 has the same coterminal side. If I wrap all the way around again, that would be up to 720 has the same coterminal side. So 720 degrees is coterminal with both of those. What if I go again? What if I go three revolutions? So 1, 2, 3. Well, that would be 360, 720, and then 1080 is also coterminal. Now, it said just to list three different coterminal angles for each of these, but let me list another one here. If I went in the opposite direction, I could say negative 360 degrees is also coterminal because it would just be rotating this way. That's negative 360. It still has the same terminal side as 0 and 360, or negative 720, or negative 1080. They're all coterminal. I'll generalize the result here. So all of these are multiples of 360. So if you want to generalize this result, we can say that all coterminal angles in this first case boil down to saying 360 degrees times n, where n is an integer. And the set of all integers is denoted with this kind of special looking z here. I like to draw a little line segment through my z to distinguish it from a 2. But this is the set of integers right here, denoted with a z. And then when we say 360 degrees n, we realize that n is an integer. And remember, your set of integers includes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then also the negatives of those, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So 360 times 0 is in there. That would be 0 degrees, the first one here. 360 times 1, that would be this. 360 times 2, 360 times 3, times 4 would be 4 revolutions, times negative 1 would be a revolution in the negative direction, so that covers every single possible case. So that's your generalization of the result. Now, a lot of times I'll write this without saying n is an element of z, because we all know that n then represents an integer when we write it in this form. So when we generalize and say n, it's understood that n is an integer. So what about 60 degrees? We already found, well, we didn't actually find one coterminal with 60 up above. 60 degrees, well, 360 plus 60 would be 420, so it's coterminal with 420 degrees. So let me list that as one of them. If I wrap around another 360 degrees, another full revolution, that would get me up to what, 780 degrees. That's going to be coterminal with them. If I went back 360 degrees, say 60 minus 360, that would just be wrapping in the other direction. So if I, you know, instead of saying 60, if I would back up 360 degrees from that, that gets me back there, and 60 minus 360 is negative 300. This angle from here all the way around to here is negative 300 degrees. So that's also coterminal. Or if I went another revolution in the negative direction, it would be negative 660. So it would be another negative 360 degrees. So, again, it asked for 3. I did 4. It's okay. To generalize the result, well, basically, if you start with a 60-degree angle and then add a certain number of revolutions to that, you're going to be at the same coterminal side. So you'll be to the same angle. Not really the same angle, but the same coterminal side. The same terminal side, I should say. So it'd be 60 plus each revolution is a multiple of 360 degrees. So if I say 60 plus 360 n, that covers it. This is 60 plus 0 n. This is 60 plus... I'll get this right here in a second. This is 60 plus 360 times 0. This is 60 plus 360 times 1. 60 plus 360 times 2. This would be when n is negative 1. This would be when n is negative 2. So to cover all of the possibilities, 
that would do it. That generalizes all coterminal angles with 60 degrees. So for part C, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to start with the generalization and then use that to generate my coterminal angles. Let me do this in a different color here. So I know everything coterminal with 150 degrees would have to be a certain number of revolutions away from 150 degrees. And each revolution is 360 degrees. So it's going to be negative 150 degrees plus 360 degrees times n. There's your generalization. Those angles will all have the same coterminal side. So now let's generate some angles just looking at it. I can see that if n is equal to 0, that's the negative 150. What if n is equal to 1? Then I would have negative 150 plus 360, which is 210 degrees. What if n was 2? It would be negative 150 plus 720, which is 570. Whoops. Whoops. There we go. 570. What if it's negative 150 minus 360? That'd be 510. So negative 510. So all of those are coterminal with negative 150 degrees. So on the second page here, we're going to look at another way of measuring angles. Um, why do we use the degree, first of all? Before looking at another way, it's good to kind of look at and understand why we use the degree. seems somewhat arbitrary when you think about it. We've kind of gotten used to it. A right angle is a 90-degree angle. A full revolution is 360 degrees. But why? Why 360? Why not make a right angle 100 degrees or make a full revolution 400, or maybe make a full revolution 100, and a right angle 25 degrees. Why did we choose it so that 360 degrees is a full revolution? And if you look at my hint here, it says, uh, this reason, however, would seem completely arbitrary away from our planet, the reason for using a degree. And so, if you think about what 360, the number 360 is close to, um, you'll realize that it's really close to the number of days in a year. We have 365 days in a year. That's where the degree comes from. That's really close to 360. 360 is divisible by so many things. Basically, the Earth travels through one degree, approximately, every single day. One degree in its nearly circular path around the Sun. And so that's where the degree comes from. And that's also why it would make no sense if you're on Mars or some other planet where it's not 300 and 60 days, Mars days, to get around the, the sun, or in Mercury's case, different than that. So, in more advanced science and engineering courses, as well as careers in these fields, a different angle measure is often used, and that's the radian measure of the angle. And that's something that would make sense no matter what planet you're on. And to understand what a radian measure is, let's look at what a typical defin definition might look like for a radian. So, you can see that right here. A unit of angular measure representing the angle subtended at the center of a circle by an arc having equal length to the radius of the circle. So that sounds kind of confusing. A unit of angular measure, so basically a measure of an angle, representing the angle subtended. So that's a central angle at the center of a circle. So the angle subtended at the center of a circle by an arc having equal length to the radius of the circle. So, again, what in the heck does this mean? A picture is worth a thousand words. So here's your radius. So if I take this radius right here and then start to angle it up a little bit. So over here it's at a slight angle. You can kind of see the animation here. And then make this line all of a sudden curve right along the arc of the circle. This actual central angle right here that you're seeing is one radian. So this angle has a measure of one radian, where this arc length right here is the length of the radius, and then right here to the center of the circle is also the length of the radius. This is defined as one radian. So actually up here where it says a unit of angular measure, it's actually a unitless measure as it turns out, because really to count the number of radians or to measure the angle in radians 
what you're in essence doing is counting how many radii fit into the arc length with a central angle of whatever the measure is. So the radian measure of an angle is really just the ratio of the arc length to the radius then because it's how many radii fit in there. This is one radian. If I tack on another radius, that's two. If it's somewhere in between, I could be at 1.5. So you can see if I had a right angle here, it's close to 1.5 radians. Turns out it's something slightly different than that, about 1.57 something, as we'll see. But it's always a ratio of the arc length to the radius because it's counting how many radii fit into that arc length. And if you take a ratio of a length to a length, let's say the length is in centimeters, then your arc length is in centimeters, your radius is in centimeters, centimeters divided by centimeters cancels out, you're really left with no unit. So that's why the radian is thought of as and is a unitless measure. So since the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, as we see here, we see that it takes 2 pi radians to go all the way around the circle. Why is that? Because this is counting how many radii fit into the entire circumference. If I wrap all the way around, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi times the radius. So how many radii fit into the circumference? 2 pi of them. This total length is 2 pi times the radius. And so the radian measure of a 360 degree angle is 2 pi. Which gives us this equivalency right here. 2 pi radians is equivalent to 360 degrees. If I divide both sides of this equation by 2, you see that pi radians is equivalent to 180 degrees. So when you're converting between radians and degrees, this is the conversion factor. I'm going to highlight it here because it's important. Circle it. That is the conversion factor you're always going to use. 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians. And hopefully as you progress through this course, you're just going to have, have radians down second nature. So the radian is so commonly used because it can be considered, as I said, a unitless measure, as it says right here. Given any circle, the radian measure of a central angle is really just the ratio of the arc length along the circle projected by the central angle to the radius of the circle. So it's the ratio of L to R. Again, a picture is worth a thousand words. So in general, L is the arc length along the circle, and R is the radius of the circle. The measure of angle theta then is just L over R in terms of radians. So the radian measure of the angle is just the arc length divided by the radius. So here it wants to know what is m of theta for this particular example. Well, it's L divided by R. Well, what's the arc length here? It looks to me like we have a right angle here, a 90 degree angle. And so this arc length right here is going to be one-fourth of the circumference of the circle. And so if I take the proper ratio here, the measure in radians is going to be L divided by R. I know that the arc length is just one-fourth of the circumference of the circle. Circumference of the circle is 2 times pi times the radius, whatever that happens to be. And so I just replaced L with what it's equal to, one-fourth of the circumference of the circle. If I simplify this, I can see that the R's cancel from the top and bottom, and then I'm left with 2 pi divided by 4. Well, 2 pi divided by 4 is the same thing as pi divided by 2. So the radian measure of that angle is pi divided by 2. A 90 degree angle is pi over 2, which makes sense again when I look back up here. If 180 degrees is pi, then 90 would be pi over 2. You'd just be dividing both sides by 2. So that's another way you can look at it. In example 4, we are labeling with radians and also doing conversions between degrees and radians. So first it says to label the end of each axis with its radian measure. Uh, let's see, let's do radians in red and degrees in blue maybe. So the end of each axis, so the positive x-axis, well zero would be the, the radian measure as well as the degree measure. Zero degrees and zero radians represent the same thing. Uh, the positive y-axis would be pi over 2. radians, 90 degrees, pi over 2 radians. Uh, the negative x-axis is 180 degrees, which we know is also pi radians. And then 
the negative y-axis is 270 degrees, which is 3 pi over 2 radians. All right. And then if you wrap all the way around, 0 is, is coterminal with 360 degrees, which is also 2 pi radians. Notice if you count as you're moving around, you're basically counting each 90 degrees as another pi over 2. So you've got 0 pi over 2, 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, which is pi, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. Then if you keep going, you'd have 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, 8 pi over 2. Every time you go up by 90 degrees, you're going up by pi over 2 radians. So this is fill in the following table with the appropriate conversions and draw and label the terminal size of each of those particular angles. When I see 30 degrees here, in order to convert it into radians, we're making use of the fact that pi radians is equivalent to 180 degrees. And so, if you're converting from degrees to radian, the ratio you're going to multiply by is pi over 180. Because if I already have 30 degrees, I said I would do degrees in blue, I'll erase this here in a second. But if I've already got 30 degrees, then I would need to multiply that by... It's a really bad times, isn't it? Try that again. That's better. Multiply that by pi radians over 180 degrees. Because that way, the degrees will cancel from the top and bottom. And I'm left with radians. You have pi radians over 180 degrees times 30 degrees. So really it boils down to simplifying 30 over 180. And that's the case with all of these. When you have degrees, you're really simplifying the fraction 30 over 180 and tacking on a factor of pi. So that's the simple way to convert from degrees to radians. When I see 30, I immediately think 30 over 180 reduces to 1 over 6. So it's going to be pi over 6 for the radian measure of that angle. Zoom in a little bit here. So this will be pi over 6. When I see 45 degrees, well, 45 over 180 reduces to 1 over 4, because 45 goes into 180 four times. So it's going to be pi over 4. When I see 60 degrees, 60 over 180, well, 180 divided by 60 is 3, so 60 over 180 is 1 -third, so it's going to be pi over 3. So your special angles in radians would be pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3 in the first quadrant. 210 degrees, well, 210 over 180 is equivalent to 21 over 18, which reduces to 7 over 6. It's going to be 7 pi over 6. And if you have oddball degrees in there, and you can't quickly reduce the fraction of that degree over 180, then you can always resort back to this. You're either going to multiply by pi over 180 degrees or 180 degrees over pi, depending on which way you're converting. If you're going from degrees to radians, you're going to want to cancel that degree measure so the degree goes on bottom, goes in the denominator. So what if I'm going the other direction? So I'm starting with 2 pi over 3 for this example over here. So that's in radians. So I'm going to need to multiply that by, this time the degrees goes on top. 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians. But notice what happens here. In essence, the pi's cancel. And so if I have the radian measure as a portion of pi, like in the next three examples here, then in essence what I'm doing is replacing pi with 180. Because two-thirds of pi in radians is the same thing as two-thirds of 180 in degrees. So because the pi's will just cancel when I multiply by that ratio, that conversion factor. So two-thirds of 180 degrees is 120 degrees, right? 2 times 180 is 360, divided by 3 is 120. 120 degrees. Or you can just think 2 thirds of 18 is 12, so it's going to be 120 here. So in degrees, 2 pi over 3 radians is equivalent to 120 degrees. 
3 pi over 4. Again, just think of replacing pi with 180. That's the simple way to do it. Now, if you get something like this last example, we're going to have to resort to using this conversion factor there of 180 degrees over pi. But when I see the pi, the quick way is to just say, well, what's 3 fourths of 180? That would be 135, right? Here's 180. 3 fourths of that would be 135. You can also think of counting by pi's over 4. There's all kinds of ways you can think about this. You have to figure out what works best for you and go with it. So you've got 0 pi over 4, 1 pi over 4 is a 45 degree angle, 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2, would be a 90 degree angle, 3 pi over 4 is here, 4 pi over 4 is pi. So we're at 3 pi over 4 right here, which is a 135 degree angle. five pi over three. Again, replace your pi with 180. And forget about the five for a minute. Just think about the pi over three. 180 over three is 60. So 60 degrees. You've got five of those. Five times 60 is 300 degrees. So that's going to be the degree measure of that angle. You have five pi's over three. And so that's 300 degrees. So 1.7, that's where we have to resort to this conversion factor. So let me go back over here. Um, fill this back in. So I'm, my conversion factor I'm going to use is 180 over pi because I'm already in radians and I want to convert it to degrees. So I've got 1.7 radians. I need to multiply that by 180 degrees over pi. Your radians cancel, even though they're technically is just a unitless measure to begin with. But this you're going to need a calculator for. So just take 1.7 times 180, and then never divide by 3.14. That's not pi. Remember, pi is an irrational number with a decimal that goes on forever. It's 3.14159265, so on and so forth. And so use the pi button from your calculator. So if I take 1.7 times 180 and then divide it by pi, I get approximately 97.4. And so this is going to be approximately 97.4, and this should be in degrees, so I should be doing blue now, just to maintain consistency with my strategy here. So it's about 97.4028217. I'll just say about 97.4 degrees. And then it also wanted me to label the terminal sides of each of these angles. So pi over 6, 30 degrees, that would be around in here. One third of the way from the x-axis to the y-axis, positive x to the positive y, so there's your pi over 6. I'm just labeling it with my converted version of the angle, so that's pi over 6, that's kind of an ugly 6, let me zoom in a little bit on that. So there's pi over 6. 45 degrees would be right about here, halfway, there's pi over 4. 60 degrees is pi over 3. That's somewhere up in here. Two hundred and ten degrees is seven pi over six, so that would be thirty degrees past the one eighty, so somewhere down in here. There's your seven pi over six. A fine tip pen would do this a lot better than my stylus on a iPad right now, but uh, 2 pi over 3 is 120 degrees. Let me convert back to degrees here. So uh, 2 pi over 3, 120 degrees is 60 degrees short of the, that's not very good, 60 degrees short of pi, or 30 degrees past pi over 2. So there's your 120 degrees. 135 degrees, well I just need to go another 15 degrees beyond that. And halfway through your second quadrant is 135 degrees. 
5 pi over 3, 300 degrees, that's 60 degrees shy of getting back to one full revolution, back to the positive x-axis, so there's your 300 degrees. That's where its terminal side would be located. And again, that means this angle from here to here is 300 degrees. And then finally, 1.7 radians is 97.4 degrees. That would be just 7.4 degrees past 90, so somewhere up in this region right here is 97.4 degrees. As I said, if you have a pencil or a fine tip pen, it can show up a lot better than what I've drawn there on this iPad. Example 5 says to now go back to example 1 and label each angle with its radian measure. So let's do that. Here's example 1. What are the radian measures of each of these? So let me get rid of some of this extra stuff so we have more room. And I'll get rid of these coterminal angles here to just take up space. Ah, yeah. See, it's being very cooperative. There we go. I'll leave the 360 there and list both of those. We've already done that anyway. So radians I'm doing in red here. So 0 degrees is 0 radians. It's also 360 is equivalent to 2 pi radians. 30 degrees, we know that that's pi over 6. 45 degrees is pi over 4. 60 degrees is pi over 3. 90 degrees, I'll just write it below here, is pi over 2. 120 is 2 pi over 3. Let me write it up here. 135 is 3 pi over 4. 150 is 5 pi over 6. 180 is going to be pi radians. 210 is equivalent to 7 pi over 6. 225 is 5 pi over 4. 240, that'd be another 60. And the way I'm doing this so quick, part of it's from memory, but also uh, if you think in terms of counting, you could fill these in, not in the order I'm doing. I'm doing every angle in succession. But if you count by 30 degrees, for instance, you've got 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, that's pi over 3, 3 pi over 6, that's pi over 2, 4 pi over 6, that's 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6 is pi, 7 pi over 6, this is going to be 8 pi over 6, which reduces to 4 pi over 3, and then 9 pi over 6 is 3 pi over 2, Ten pi over six is five pi over three. That's your three hundred degrees here. Eleven pi over six would be this one right here. Eleven pi over six. And can't reduce that any. And so the only one I've left out then is the three fifteen, which you can actually get all those by counting by forty five degrees, which is pi over four. So I've got 1 pi over 4 is right here, and then 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, which I've identified, 4 pi over 4 is pi, 5 pi over 4, you see right here, this would be 6 pi over 4 is 3 pi over 2, and then 7 pi over 4 would be 315. So 315 is equivalent to 7 pi over 4. And then 8 pi over 4 would be equivalent to the 2 pi. So I hope that makes sense. If not, please ask questions. So now we've done example five. Put a purple check mark by that one. Example six says to convert the following angles from degrees to radians. 
So, again, you're using the fact that pi radians is 180 degrees repeatedly here on these. I'm just going to do all these problems in purple rather than blues and reds. So 340 degrees. If I want to convert 340 degrees to radians, I know that I multiply by pi radians over 180 degrees. That'll cancel the radian measure as a unit and leave you with radians. So really it boils down to simplifying 34 over 18, right? 340 over 180, and that's your multiple of pi. 34 over 18 reduces to 17 over 9, so it's going to be 17 pi over 9 radians. So 20 degrees, same thing. And again, you should be pausing these videos and trying them yourself before you see the actual answer. So this is 20 degrees times pi over 180. Well, 20 over 180 reduces to 2 out of 18 or 1 out of 9, so this is equivalent to just pi over 9 radians. Negative 1800 degrees. Multiply that by pi over 180. And I can see that the negative 1800 over 180 simplifies to negative 10, so it's going to be negative 10 pi. And by practicing these problems more and more, you get to where it's just second nature. It's really quick to get to the end result. Um, so you got 500 degrees. If I multiply that by pi over 180, well, 500 over 180 is 50 over 18, which is also 25 over 9. So it's going to be 25 pi divided by 9. So that would be your radian measure for that angle. And then in example 7, we're converting from radians back to degrees. So my conversion ratio just gets flipped. Instead of pi over 180, I'll use 180 over pi because I want to cancel the degree or the radian and leave it in degree. So if you have one radian, oops. 1 radian, I need to multiply that by 180 degrees divided by pi radians. That'll cancel the radian and leave you in degrees. So 180 divided by pi would be the exact answer for this. 180 over pi degrees. don't like my degree there. If you want to get a decimal approximation for it, let's go ahead and do so. 180 divided by pi. So we can see exactly what one radian is. It's 57.29577951. So approximately, and just so I don't take up space from the next problem, let me put it down below. That's approximately 57.3 degrees. So pi radians is approximately 57.3 degrees. So 5 radians, same thing, multiply by 180 degrees divided by pi. So that's going to be, what, 900 over pi, which is approximately 286.5, if I round to the nearest tenth, 286.5 degrees because it's 286.47889 round to the nearest tenth, it's 286.5. Now the next ones are a little bit nicer because I know that when I have the pi in there, pi is equivalent to 180 degrees. I could still multiply by 180 over pi, but the pi's cancel and I'm basically replacing pi with 180. So once the pi is in there on your radian measure, it makes it a lot easier. 180 divided by 12 is what this is equivalent to in degrees. So anytime I see pi radians, I know I can replace it with 180 degrees. So 180 degrees divided by 12 is 15 degrees. Because 180 divided by 12 is 15. 7 pi over 10 is equal to 7 times 180 degrees divided by 10. So that's equivalent to 7 times 18, which is 126. So this would be 126 degrees. Let's 
makes sense it's uh, 70% of 180 and that does it for lesson one